will speak about Morita Siri in Homotopy Theory. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks. So uh, these announcements are kind of funny before my talk. So first of all, if you went off to that boardroom, you're not going to be able to ask questions, are you? So there's good reason not to have gone. Um, <laughs> second of all, I have no jokes, so there's nothing to laugh at. <laughs> oh, wow. Um, OK, so I'm going to be talking about Morita theory. And I'm going to be talking about Morita theory in several settings. So the first setting will be classical. Open it, was hard, oh, it was already it's mentioned. Natural, thank you. And then I said, but it's a good thing not to go there because they can't ask questions. <laughs> luckily, luckily, I'm winning. Thank you all for staying. <laughs> okay. We continue that discussion afterwards. <laughs> okay, as I was saying, um, OK, I, I suppose if you, if you don't have a chair, it's OK if you go. <laughs> um, OK, so uh, I'm going to be talking about Morita theory in uh, a classical setting for rings and in a derived setting for rings, and then for differential graded algebras, and then finally for spectra. So that's my uh, introduction to Morita theory. And then uh, part five, which is sort of a little bit different, uh, we'll, I'll talk about some recent results, which use Morita theory. OK, so as I mentioned, I'm going to start with the classical Morita theory. So Morita theory for rings. And this first appeared in a paper by Morita in 1958. So uh, this says that the following are equivalent. First of all, two rings R and T are called Morita equivalent if their module categories are equivalent as categories. OK, and I'll be using right modules throughout. It turns out that it's more convenient. Um, and two rings are Morita equivalent if and only if various criteria hold. So the first criteria it says if there exists a finitely generated projective module, oops, projective generator M, such that the endomorphism ring. of M as a T module is isomorphic to R. OK, and then the another equivalent condition is that you ask that there exists an RT by module, which we'll call N, such that Tensoring within gives me an equivalence from R modules to T modules. Okay, so that's, that induces an equivalence of categories. Yeah, I am. Um, it'll come up in the proof. So. Uh, <laughs> Let me, let me sketch the proof, and you can ask that question again if you'd like it the, in the middle. Um, OK, so I'm going to sketch the proof of the, this Morita theory. And that's uh, because 
the, the classical proof actually works in the other settings, almost exactly the same. Um, so what happens here? So I'm going to first talk about the condition two and why it, why it implies one. And sort of the answer I want to give to you is that it's a, it should be a homework problem to figure out what finitely generated projective generator means. It's exactly the conditions that are needed for a certain functor to be an equivalence. So here, I'm going to be thinking about the functor, which is homomorphisms of T modules out of M. Okay? And the conditions in 2 are exactly the conditions that are needed to make this induce the equivalence of categories. So here, I'm putting in a T module. And then what am I getting out? Well, the endomorphisms on M are required to be isomorphic to R. And I notice that the endomorphisms of M act by precomposition here. And therefore, I get out a right R module. Okay, So that's the first condition that I actually land in R modules. Um, and then the next thing to notice is that the endomorphisms of M act on M on the left. And so that makes M an RT bimodule. And I ran out of room, but the functor, the left adjoint that sits up there, is tensoring over R with M. That gives me uh, the functor back. And um, now I just need to say a few more words about why this is an equivalence. So let's first look at what happens to the object M. So if I take M as a right T module and I plug it in, I get the endomorphisms on M, and that was isomorphic to R. Okay? And then if I plug in R, I see that I get back M. Okay? And now um, I, I wanted to remark that these are generators. And because they're generators, that means that all other modules can be built up by sums and co-kernels. Okay? So, um, I know that M is taken to R and back to M, and R goes around to R. So if that's true for all of my objects, then I'll have an equivalence of categories. And it turns out that because they're generators, uh, that's, and the generators are taken to each other, all of the other modules will be taken to each other as well. Except for I haven't yet used all the criteria. So what do I, what I need is that M is a finitely generated projective so that this preserves sums and co-kernels. Okay. So um, there's a quick sketch of what some of those definitions are. I'll be more careful about the definitions in the next setting. Okay, so uh, that shows that if we have a finitely generated projective generator M, the, and the endomorphisms are isomorphic to R, then we get an equivalence of categories between the two categories of right modules. Okay. Along the way, notice we also showed that 2 implies 3 because we came up with an RT bimodule such that tensoring over R with M gives me an equivalence of categories. Okay. And it's also easy to see that 3 implies 1 because the third condition is just saying I have a particular equivalence of categories. So of course, I have an equivalence of categories. OK, so the only thing that's left then is um, to show that 1 implies 2. So if I am given an equivalence of categories, then in order to find this module M that I need in, in part 2, I'm just going to uh, assign M to be the image of R under the functor F. <laughs> I don't want to change all the words. So I'm going to say my functor F is a, the functor from R modules to T modules. Okay? So one can check then that this satisfies all the properties. So for example, if I look at 
the endomorphisms of the image of R that's isomorphic to the endomorphisms of R because I have an equivalence of categories. And so, of course, that's R. And similarly, uh, an equivalence of categories takes R, a finitely generated projective module, finitely generated projective generator, to a finitely generated projective generator. Okay, so. That's the, the sketch of the, the classical situation. Okay, so the next thing I should do is give you an example. So the standard example for Morita, classical Morita theory is that R and the n by n matrices over R are Morita equivalent. There are many other interesting examples, but I'm going to save my time to give you some more interesting examples in the other settings. Okay, so this is the classical situation, and then I, I want to move to the derived situation. So classical situation for abelian categories we understand very well, and of course we like to do homotopy theory, and you can't really do homotopy theory with just an abelian category. So instead, we want to look at the derived situation, look at the differential graded situation. So here, so this is part two, the derived situation. I want to look at chain complexes of R modules, or differential graded R modules. And here, these are Z graded. And then I'm going to be also looking at the derived category of R, which is uh, Chain, the chain complexes of R where I've inverted the quasi-isomorphisms. And, you know, the, another way you might think about this as uh, the homotopy category of chain complexes over a ring R. Because I'm working with Z-graded chain complexes, this is a triangulated category. The triangles uh, are associated to, are basically the, the long exact sequences that come from the short exact sequences of complexes. Okay, so then, uh, again, I'm gonna use some words without defining them in the next theorem, but then I'm gonna give definitions afterwards. So the next uh, derived Morita theory uh, was developed by Rickard in papers in 89 and 91, and then generalized by Keller in 94. And it says that, first of all, we say two rings, R and T, are derived equivalent. if their derived categories are equivalent as triangulated categories. So my notation will be, okay, so these are equivalent as triangulated categories. Okay, well, it turns out that it's very similar to the classical situation two rings are derived equivalent if and only if there exists a compact generator M such that, so in the derived category of T, such that the derived endomorphism ring is isomorphic to R. So here, I'm looking at the graded derived endomorphism ring from M to itself, and I want to ask that that's isomorphic to R, and here I'm thinking of R as concentrated in degree zero. Okay, so my derived endomorphisms are also concentrated in degree zero. And such a M 
is called a tilting complex. So right here, I'm thinking of it as a grade and a billion group. Right. OK, so it would be a perfectly good question to ask, what's a compact generator? So notice, I, here, I, I was talking about a generator in an abelian category. It's different, okay? a generator in a triangulated category. So that's why I wanted to say the definition here. So let me just say, um, for C, a triangulated category with infinite coproducts, I'm going to define uh, M as compact if maps out of M preserves sums. Okay, and in the drive category of a ring R, the compact objects are exactly the, uh, well, sorry, the complexes that are quasi-isomorphic to a bounded complex of finitely generated projectives. Okay, so we can see that's, that's clearly uh, taking the place of the finitely generated projective condition. And similarly also, right, it's preserving sums. Okay, so then what about a generator? M is a generator. Well, there are lots of different ways to say this, but let me, uh, the standard definition. M is a generator if the only triangulated subcategory of C containing M and closed under coproducts co is all of C. Okay, so uh, if you know the language that says that the only localizing subcategory containing M is all of C. Um, so, um, right, so, so that's small, sometimes also called compact, it depends. But here I'm, I'm, I'm defining this in the derived category, so in the homotopy category. Right, well, okay, for smallness, yeah, so sorry. Other places you can define small in, in the underlying category or in the derived category, you can get different things. But here, yes, uh, it, sh it agrees because, yeah, of tricks with infinite coproducts. Okay, so, um, and the, the other definition I didn't say about generator is given a compact object, it's a generator if and only if it detects trivial objects. It's another thing you can, can be a more useful definition. Okay, so that fills in the, the definitions for the derived Morita theory. I uh, wanted to make a couple more comments about the derived Morita theory. I didn't write up the bimodule criterion, but you can. Okay. And I should mention um, that Keller, uh, the generalization uh, due to Keller is to consider rings with many objects and differential graded categories. And there's a similar generalization for Morita theory. Right? You can think about rings with many objects or abelian categories. Okay. Okay, so let me just say something about the proof of this derived Morita theory. So as I said before, it is the same proof. <laughs> so I'm not going to say much. Um, so the proof is the same. So 
1 implies 2, again, I take m to be the image of R under the functor, the equivalence of categories going from the derived category of R to the derived category of T. And we can see uh, by basically the same argument as this that the endomorphism ring is going to give me R back because an equivalence of triangulated categories gives me an equivalence of the derived endomorphism rings. Okay? And triangulated equivalences preserve compact objects and generators. And so R, you can check, is a compact generator in the derived category of R, and therefore M will be a compact generator. Okay, and then similarly, uh, 2 implies 1, here we look at the func <laughs> sorry. We look at the functor which says, look at the derived endomorphisms from M into an object, and that produces the equivalence from the derived category of T to the derived category of R, provided that M is a compact generator. It needs to be compact, so it preserves sums. It needs to be a generator so that after we've arranged for M to go to R and R to go to M, then all other objects built out of sums and triangles are also preserved. Okay, so, um, you know, the, the main thing that you need to figure out here is how to set up exactly the same situation as in the classical situation. Okay. What is condition three? What is condition three? Well, I'm leaving it off for uh, time reasons, I suppose. Um, so you mean the, the bimodule condition? I'm going to do the bimodule condition in the spectra case. So, and then you can, rings are a special case of spectra, so we'll see about that. Um, okay, so probably would have been faster to write it than to, to explain that, but okay. So um, I want to do an example of the derived case. So there are examples of rings who are derived equivalent, but which are not Morita equivalent. So here is such an example. So if K is a field, and I want to look at the three by three matrices over that field, then I can look at T, the upper triangular matrices. So the matrices with non-zero entries in the upper triangular spots. It's a subalgebra of the three by three matrices. And then I'm going to look at R, and again, I'll allow non-zero entries here. Okay, so here's an example where R and T are derived equivalent, but not Morita equivalent. Okay, and I, maybe I should say, sometimes we say derived Morita equivalent. I'm just saying derived equivalent. Okay, R and T are derived equivalent, but not Morita equivalent. So to show that they're derived equivalent, I should come up with a tilting complex. And a tilting, tilting complex has to be a compact generator, and a compact object is going to be quasi-isomorphic to a bounded complex of finitely generated projectives. So I need to tell you a little bit about the projectives. So the projectives... In T, I can get by using the idempotence um, with entries in II, and uh, that gives me PI. So, what does that mean? Um, so, P3 I can think of as the module, the right module with entries in the third spot. P2 has entries in the last two spots, and P1, oops, I'm allowed to use all entries. Okay, so given those projectives, I can define a tilting complex, and here I'm actually going to give a tilting module. So it's going to be P1, direct sum P2, 
Drexon P2 mod P3. Okay, so uh, that's not exactly a finitely generated projective, right? But it's pretty easy to see that it's quasi isomorphic to a bounded uh, complex of projectives, right? I just take P2 and degree one and map down to P3. Okay, so that's a tilting complex. And you can check that the derived endomorphisms are isomorphic to R. This is actually a pretty simple example. Uh, you just have to think about which of these projectives map to each other. Okay, so I've already told you P3 maps to P2, maps to P1, and um, the, other, the other entries here uh, are simple. So that's a good exercise. Um, so that's why they're derived equivalent, that this is a tilting complex. I should say that's M. Um, yes. So, so, um, uh, so when I say derived, for example, um, I would want to uh, replace this by the bounded complex of projectives and then take that into morphism ring, right? So, um, I mean, this isn't quite projective, so I need to resolve it to get the... Oh, it may be. Yeah, what I said said that. You're right. Actually, so, so okay. Yes, 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 exactly. If that were projective, it would give me a Morita equivalence, right? And it's not actually Morita. It's sorry. It's it's not actually projective, and therefore, at least this module doesn't give me the Morita equivalence. But in fact, you can show that they're not Morita equivalent because their categories are not equivalent. <laughs> and the way to see that is by looking at the indecomposables. So let me just write that down. So R and T are not marine equivalent. And that you can do by, you can see by um, check, checking the indecomposables. So um, I, for T, I just I showed you there are three indecomposable uh, projective modules, and they have maps like this. And for R, you can see that um, you only have you have maps like this, okay? and those are not the same, and therefore the module categories are not equivalent. And I'll let you think about why <laughs> um, you can fill that in. Okay, so. More, there are lots more examples of derived Morita equivalence rings that are not Morita equivalent in the classical sense. And um, that's why Rickard and Keller were interested in these. And in particular, the one way to find lots more examples is to look up Bray's conjecture. So Bray's conjecture is a conjecture about derived equivalences of rings. And I'm, I'm it's going to be uh, too, too long of a digression for me to say more, but um, it's a conjecture about the representation theory of finite groups. And lots of cases of Bruet's conjecture have been shown to be true and therefore have examples of derived equivalences. Okay. Okay. So that's the, the derived setting. And then. Um, you might say, well, um, as homotopy theorists, maybe it bothers me a little bit that we're only looking at the derived category, right? Often we say, often I say, um, you lose too much information by going to the homotopy category. You want to be looking at the homotopy theory instead. So what happens if instead of asking for a derived equivalence, I ask for a underlying equivalence? So what about underlying equivalences, I want to look at instead equivalences on the categories of chains. And what sort of equivalence would I mean there? I, I would mean equivalent equivalence of model categories or any other equivalence of homotopy theories you want to consider. But it turns out that here you don't gain anything. So for rings, 
R and T, the, their derived categories are triangulated equivalent. If and only if the underlying homotopy theories are what I'll call what are called clone equivalent. Okay, so so um, this is a this is a rare situation where the homotopy categories are equivalent if and only if the underlying categories are equivalent. But for rings, um, it turns out to, ho to hold. So let's see how we can prove this. So if I have a derived equivalence, Rickard and, Marita and Keller tell, tell me that I get a tilting complex. So I have a compact generator M such that uh, it induces the triangulated equivalence. Well, it also induces the quillen equivalence. A okay, HOM out of M is a quillen functor, and therefore I get an equivalence. And of course, if I have an underlying equivalence, it gives me a derived equivalence. OK. OK, so in this situation, it doesn't matter whether we take the homotopy category or the homotopy theory equivalences. That's not the case for, so not true for spectra, for example. And we'll see that in a minute. OK. So we've taken one step from rings and uh, considered differential graded modules over a ring. And how about another step towards uh, more homotopical meaning? Let's uh, look at actually differential graded rings, differential graded algebras. So that's the next setting for Marita theory. So let's look at Marita theory. for differential graded rings, or DGAs. So we can ask the same question as what I was just saying for rings. Does it matter whether we look at derived equivalences or underlying equivalences? So that's part of the following question. So for two DGAs A, and B are the following equivalent. 